I was not planning on making an, uh, any type of video for the snow plow except, you know, maybe a short video on during the first snow, you know, how will it work connected to the truck. But I've run into a lot of issues so far with this. Um, most of them I would chalk up to quality control or lack of precision. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and throw these out there right now just so that everybody sees this video. Um, this is not not going to be a how-to video. Uh, there are several good videos out there by some other guys on how to put uh, the snow plows together. Um, specifically these snow bears. Uh, mine's the 88 inch snow bear. Um, and i got to be honest, I'm kind of disappointed, um, especially from uh, you know, you know, a North American company. Um, they are a Canadian based company and I thought that uh, you know, being a a hundred percent North American company, and you know, being from the North Latitudes, I figured that I would not have some of the problems I'm having on this snowplow and assembling it. Um, I'm gonna start uh, start rattling those down right now. I've got six, and that's what I'll start with. Um, I would love comment and feedback. Uh, you know, with some of these things, I've tried to. You know, take things apart, switch them around, move nuts or bolts. Um, but I've already had to make four trips to uh, the big box store to get different nuts or bolts depending on the size. So we'll start off with uh, problem number one, which was the directions themselves. So here in step two for the 60, 72, 82, and 84 inch blade assemblies, that picture right down there tells you to put the skid shoes on. But, when we turn the page to the 88 inch blade assembly, there is nothing. It doesn't tell us to put skid shoes on, which is not a big deal in and of itself, except for the fact that once you move on a few pages, by the way, the revision here for step 10 is a very good revision. And it was very well explained on that one. But you go here to step 12, and there's a skid shoe installed. That set the tone for how the rest of this was going to go. So you look down here and you realize that this top bar has been welded twice, or sorry, been drilled through on two angles for these uh, for the brake springs for the brake over springs or trip springs it is a trip blade but if you notice on this one those holes are not at the same spot they are on the other side so one of the top bars which by the way these are a single piece if you look at it from this end here that angle right there is a single piece and this one is welded once but on the wrong side again you know in and of itself not a huge deal I just went through last night and welded a hole or uh, drilled a hole you know just grab the uh, grab the, gra the craftsman power drill motor and drilled it out so that it's as straight and flat as I could make it to mimic this one. That's what I tried to do with them. Um, and just so you know, if anybody else ever runs into this problem, the distance from this hole to that center line is 11 inches. So I just went out to 11 and went halfway up on there. And that's the best we've got. And just so anybody at Snow Bear, if you're going to contradict this, look you're gonna realize that that is 11 inches from there and so is that from center line. So everybody else, if you need to do that, that's where your mark is. Number three, the, the hole, the center hole for the upper A-frame to blade pin is off by about uh, maybe half an inch. I'm sorry, about a quarter inch. I'm probably uh, two causes for this one could have easily been just lack of quality control when they are going through and cutting these two pieces or the other one 
which I suspect may be this right here. If you see, there's a lot of heat going on on both the horizontal and the vertical support members of this, uh, of this angle iron here. So I suspect that with the heat, it just bent it off. The problem, though, is for me now, I'm going to have to go back through, and I'm going to have to redrill that hole to get it correct, to get the fin to fit, get the pin to fit, and that pin is never going to fit properly, so now I'm going to have an, you know, at least partially unsupported snowplow for the entirety of the time I own this. Number four, bolts that are too short or holes that are drilled, um, uh, as you can see here, maybe a quarter of an inch. They were drilled a quarter of an inch too high. The funny part is that it's on both sides. So these, which are the off-road light brackets, bolt on to where this, this motor support to bracket mounts are right, right here. These bolts, these are the longer bolts that come with the off-road light kit. And as you can see, and I got to readjust this just a bit. So when you push it out to there, where it actually would be, you realize that it's too short to hit the nylock that is actually inside that nut. So I had to go buy two new longer, I had to go buy five inch instead of these four inches, it just don't work. Along with that, another problem is this bolt right here. This bolt right here that holds them on, it was actually stripped out on this side. And this isn't even American made gear, this is straight up made in China stuff. Which, now it doesn't surprise me that that bolt, but the problem was is that this nut, when you went to go tighten it, it didn't screw on properly. And it was skipping, and it already rounded off. So I went, went to a big box store, tested them both, figured out which it was, and it was the bolt. Had to go buy another one of those. So the motor here, the extension arm on the worm drive motor, came to me too short to actually be able to put the bolt through it. So now I come to a major issue. I can't actually articulate this thing. I've got to get it mounted up, get all the electronics mounted up before I even see if that fits. I suspect it will, but again, there, you know, there needs to be some type of measurement from here to here or you know from from bottom of the uh, outer sleeve here to the center of that hole that somebody at the factory needs to be checking to make sure that you can actually bolt it up. And just in case anybody's wondering, there is slack in the chain. So this is down as far as it'll go. And if you see, I still can't get that lined up in there. Number six. The upper, or sorry, lower A-frame to motor connection chain. The chain that actually articulates your plow blade up and down. Comes here and you're, you're supposed to make sure that this link goes through this hole. Well, the problem is, is my holes, these holes here for this U-bolt are drilled too far forward and I now have a pinch point on my chain right there. So now I'm going to have to loosen those and let everything just rattle around and not even be able to, and I understand that you want the chain to be loose, but my U-bolt's going to have to be loose too, which means I'm now going to wear the threads out and start to create stress risers and weak points on that U-bolt. And I'm not sure if Snowbear did that on purpose. Um, I, I can't imagine a reason why you would want that the actual U-bolt uh, there loose. I understand wanting the chain loose so it doesn't bind. But I, I have no idea why you would want the U-bolt to be loose and not snugged up to the lower A-frame. And then, I don't know, again, they look like they're drilled, uh, you know, I don't know. 12 and a half millimeters too far forward, half an inch too far forward. So I found one more issue with the Snow Bear Snow Plow. <clears throat> it is 
the skid shoe attachment brackets. Um, they mention in one of their videos, or not necessarily one of Snowplows, but one of the videos I watched. And if I can find it, I'll link to it, but um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find it again. They mentioned that to do some measurements to find out how far you want the blade above the ground. And there are two shoes. There's one that's bent at... Uh, maybe a 15 or 22 and a half degree angle. Another one's about a 45 degree angle. I put the ones on there that had less uh, bend in them, the 15 or 22 and a half, whatever it was. And the problem now is that as the snow plow goes forward, you know, as the snow plow travels across, my skid shoes are kind of, they have a tip on the end of them and they're kind of pointed into the ground. So I'm going to need to get the other one so that that point is uh, closer to 90 degrees off of the, the ground so that um, I won't be digging in as I'm driving. It will be skidding across the top more. Other than that, I went and tried it out uh, tonight. I didn't get any video because it was after dark and I was just kind of doing it on the fly. But uh, I will get some video of the plow in use. But other than that, it, it seemed to work fine. The electronics worked fine. The remote control worked fine. Um, the lights... They work great. Um, and again, I know in some of this, uh, some attitude started to come up. I am not all in all upset with the snowplow. It's a good plow from what I've seen so far. It seems good and hardy. Um, it, I don't think it's going to randomly break or anything. The only problem is some of those issues I talked about that I think some of them were quality control and some of them are just maybe I wasn't prepared. Or maybe I thought that it should have been based a little differently than it was. Um, I think maybe I thought it was going to be a little bit more plug and play. Um, I am not upset. I'm not mad at, uh, you know, Snow Bear. It's not even a bad plow, just a few issues I saw. Um, as much to bring it to the attention of future buyers as hopefully to the company itself so that, you know, they can, you know, work on it, find out whatever fits into their price point that they can correct. Or maybe things they didn't know were going wrong and they can correct with, you know, however they do that. And maybe it's all designed to be that way and I just kind of figured it out on my own instead of knowing through experience that some of these things are going to be need to be done being that it is my first time. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and please check out uh, some of my other playlists and some of the other projects I've done and we'll see how it turns out.